Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Trace, and today we're going to be talking about breast ultrasound basics and some biopsy techniques. This work is sponsored by Medical Center Radiologist and has been made possible by a grant from the Radiologic Society of North America through General Electric. So here are some of the basic items that you'll see on a breast biopsy tray. We have a probe cover with gel, lidocaine, lidocaine with epinephrine, a small scalpel. We have a device used to help clean the skin as well as some gauze and your biopsy needle. Often biopsies will be performed with a vacuum assist device which is depicted here. This device uses a high gauge needle as well as vacuum suction to obtain tissue. Here we see the needle and the aperture that tissue would be placed in with vacuum assistance. We may also use devices like these. These are core biopsy needles. This specific brand is called a Temno and they come in various sizes with various sized pitches or apertures. Here we have an introducer device that would be placed into the skin first to localize the lesion and then the needle is placed through this localizer needle to reach the mass that needs to be biopsied. So when we talk about breast biopsy we're going to be using the linear probe. It's a high frequency probe that has excellent spatial resolution but poor depth penetration. But for the most part this will do just fine for most ultrasound guided breast biopsies. When you hold the probe it's important to remember your position in space. The probe can be oriented with heel or toe pressure and can be rocked back and forth that would cause a change in your image and perception of the needle underneath the skin. Remember, your patient may be very scared. This may be one of the most invasive procedures they've ever had. So be mindful of this and prepare ahead of time. When we talk about breast biopsy, it's important to know where the lesion is relative to the nipple. In this case, we use the annotation of a clock face. The clock face does not change based on right and left breasts. It is always looking at the patient the number is 12 and the head of the patient going clockwise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the caudal aspect of the patient and then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 back up to the head. So here we see the left breast depicted. This is the same orientation for the right breast. So for instance, a lesion in the 9 o'clock position of the left breast would be a medial breast lesion. A lesion in the 9 o'clock position on the right breast would be a lateral breast lesion out towards the axilla on the right breast. So it's important that you understand what your tools are and make sure you confidently use those tools in front of the patient. Remember, if you're fumbling with your probe cover, this may be the first thing the patient sees as you're prepping for this ultrasound. Uh, guided biopsy and you want to make sure you give them confidence that you know what you're doing and have done this before. So it's important to practice on models and training sets before you address an actual patient. The first part that we often describe is mastering the probe cover. It's not universally used in other settings but in our residency it's always used a sterile cover on the ultrasound probe when performing any breast procedure. Probe covers come in different makes and models so know what you're using, know how to put it on, and remember this will inspire confidence in your patient. So when you have the probe cover, these are the basic things as you unfold the sterile wrap that the probe covers come in. Here is the plastic probe cover, some sterile gel, as well as two rubber bands. Be sure to put your sterile glove through the probe cover, place gel on top of the probe, and then grab the top of the probe as the ultrasound technologist hands it to you and slide the sheath over the cover in a sterile fashion. 
attach your two rubber bands, and you're ready to go. You want to carefully plan your approach, so be sure to spend time actually looking around the breast with ultrasound to plan the optimal approach. Remember, we want to cause the least amount of scarring and minimal evasion as possible. Be sure you have a good grasp of the position of the lesion. Remember what we talked about mapping relative to the nipple and the clock face of the breast. Know the shape of the breast and the shape of the patient and orient the patient so that your approach is optimal and your hands are appropriate. Understand the proximity of the lesion to the skin and chest wall. Remember the risks that are involved in this include damage to the chest wall or quite possibly pneumothorax for very deep lesions. Breast thickness, proximal to distal to your lesion along the approach of your needle is also an important consideration. Throw Doppler ultrasound onto the lesion and make sure you know that there's a high risk of hematoma given the vascularity of a lesion. As a general rule, you want to biopsy a mass from the inferior approach or lateral approach if necessary. This helps minimize any visible scars for women when they wear dresses with low-lying necks or v-necks. We want to minimize any scarring. Avoid making a nick in the skin in the upper inner quadrant if at all possible. Again, it's not always possible, but if you're able to position yourself or the patient to avoid this and change your approach, it's always best to do that. Avoid the areola and never biopsy skin. So take time on the table to optimize your approach. And start off by numbing the skin. We use a very fine high gauge needle for cutaneous numbing and larger caliber needles for deeper injections. 1% lidocaine is our first medication unless the patient has a lidocaine allergy. Remember, lidocaine is an amide, so if there's a lidocaine allergy, switch to an ester base local anesthetic such as chloroprocaine. Although traditional teaching is to avoid lidocaine with epinephrine in the skin, there are minimal reports of actual skin necrosis occurring from lidocaine with epinephrine. So if that's necessary to limit bleeding around the mass, then be sure to address your institution's policies. And be sure not to skimp on lidocaine. Be sure to put a big wheel of anesthesia in the skin around the mass and limit pain to the patient. So here we see a basic ultrasound with the needle going into the skin. Take a look at the hyperechoic needle and what's important to see here is a couple things. We see the entire needle in this image and you never want to lose track of your needle, especially not the needle tip, so that you know where you are relative to the mass and chest wall. Importantly here, the hypoechoic material is muscle in the chest wall, and this is a rib. So we're very close to the chest wall with many of these deep lesions, or with women with less breast tissue. The other thing to note here is the artifact you see, several hyperechoic lines stemming down from the needle. This is in fact reverberation artifact, and an important thing to note. The next important thing I'd like to discuss is the angle of approach. Coming in too parallel to the skin with the numbing needle puts more of the needle in the skin and causes much more pain. Once you're below the skin, however, your needle should remain nearly parallel to the skin and chest wall for the rest of the biopsy. Please note, you want to be as parallel to the chest wall as possible when you are biopsying. This will help you see your needle and avoid accidental contact with the chest wall and minimize complications, especially those such as pneumothorax. Be sure, as we discussed, you want to see the entire needle the entire time. So here we have a left breast lesion at 12 o'clock, six centimeters from the nipple. The annotation here is 12 o'clock position, six centimeters from the nipple. With uneven pressure on the probe, we can see that we only see a piece of our needle here. This can be caused by heel or toe pressure. 
With the probe long axis parallel to the needle but not perpendicular to the skin surface, you can also produce a similar picture. Here we have a slight curvature one side to the other. It's not perpendicular to our needle or the skin. Here we see the needle is perpendicular to the skin surface but not parallel to the needle. So in this case, what we're catching is an off-axis glimpse of part of our needle, but not the entire thing. And this can be incredibly dangerous, not only for sampling the wrong area of the breast, but also for causing potential complications with the needle. So use lidocaine in multiple ways. Lidocaine can be used for local anesthesia, it can be used for deep anesthesia, and it can be used to raise a deep lesion up. So in this case, we see a beautiful technique entire needle here in view. Slightly more of an angle than we would like, but we're injecting anesthesia to lift that lesion off the chest wall and make it more superficial and thus less dangerous to biopsy. Position the needle below the mass if possible to best demonstrate the relationship of the mass to the needle aperture. Here we see a very nice picture of the needle tip, the aperture opening, and that ridge here of the end of the aperture opening and the rest of the needle, right below the mass that we intend to biopsy. And documentation of each pass the entire time also gives us a great idea uh, for what tissue we actually got, how it correlates with the pathology, and it also helps with surgical planning should that be necessary in the future. Always a good idea, again, before you take any tissue to recheck for blood vessels. Show the aperture opening with the mass being sampled. And then make sure you see your whole needle before beginning any biopsy. Finally, when you're satisfied you've obtained enough tissue, it's important to place a fiduciary marker like a clip. To do this, the needle tip should be within the lesion itself, not above, not below, but within the lesion that you've biopsied. So slowly draw the needle out while deploying the clip. Here we see a hyperechoic clip within the lesion and the needle tip being withdrawn out. Take a final picture to document your clip placement within the mass. Here we see the hyperechoic clip within our mass. We see the needle track and the needle is out. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. These are just some of the basics of breast biopsying techniques. Uh, this work has been put together by Dr. John Plemons and read by Dr. Anthony Trace. I'd also like to thank the residents and staff of the EVMS Department of Radiology. And this work, again, was made possible by a GE education grant through the Radiologic Society of North America. Additional topics on this website can be found at anatomyguide.com. Thank you.